Me on January 21, 2012 at around 22.30 Universal Time. Active Sunspot 1401 erupted yesterday, January 19 at around 16.30 Universal Time, producing an M3 class solar flare and a full halo coronal mass ejection. The Solar and Heliospheric Observatory recorded the cloud expanding almost directly toward Earth. Analysts at the Goddard Space Weather Lab say strong geomagnetic storms are possible when the cloud arrives this weekend. Their animated forecast track predicts an impact on January 21 at 2230 Universal Time, plus or minus 7 hours. Although this was only a M-class solar flare, what is of great interest is the duration of the CME. This graph shows that it was at least a 12-hour event, while other reliable sources claim that the event lasted as long as 24 hours, or more. This being said, it seems concerning that when the CME arrives, we should expect a long-lasting solar geomagnetic storm. This raises a question. What effect will this long duration have on Earth's magnetic field, thus the reason for this video? The storm arrived on January 22, 2012, at 06.17 Universal Time. The following magnetosphere data was captured starting at 10.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 21, in 15-minute intervals, through 3.30 p.m., Eastern Standard Time on January 22. This data was collected from spaceweather.com over the same duration of time, in the same 15-minute intervals. Looking at the data, you can see when the storm peaks, at around 1.30 a.m., January 22. Notice the uptick in wind speeds, KP index, proton density, and the north-south changes in the interplanetary magnetic field. The following radio X-ray absorption data was captured starting at 10.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, January 21, in 15-minute intervals through 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on January 22. Several 6.0 magnitude quakes occurred during the solar event. Significant electrical ground currents were recorded in Norway when the solar storm began, as shown here. The CME also disturbed Earth's ionosphere. In Atlanta, Georgia, radio engineers monitored a 4.5 MHz CODAR, coastal radar signal as it bounced off layers of ionization along the U.S. east coast. The moment of impact can be clearly seen on the CODAR radar plot. As of 8 o'clock, a.m., January 23rd, the KP index was still unsettled at 3, as shown here in these images of the magnetosphere simulation, and the radiation absorption chart. While still feeling the effects of yesterday's storm, Sunspot 1402 produced another magnitude 8.7 CME, on January, 23rd, at 3. 59, Universal Time. This was also a long duration C meter E. Images courtesy of Soho.
Now, sit back, and enjoy these images of auroras, taken around the world, during the storm in Dio's face. Feel free to visit our research website at www.planetxresearch.org to access many solar related links and resources. Also keep an eye on the real-time magnetosphere simulation during the coming solar storm.